So today I want to talk a little bit about genre and specifically about the loosely defined genre of coming of age. Um, it was perhaps more narrowly defined in the past, but uh, now it's, it's become more loosely defined maybe uh, of necessity. A lot of people learn the term in high school when they study J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye. I learned it then. Uh, I was probably 14 or 15. This is actually my faculty copy from when I taught this book in L.A. Um, Holden Caulfield is a boarding school student. He's dealing with depression. He's been in one boarding school after another. And it's really the first time that he is able to judge the adults around him. And that's one of the first features of any coming-of-age novel. Um, this book, by the way, was written in 1951, or published in 1951. Some people think it's not as relevant today. Um, it's a little old-fashioned. But I think that for the study of coming-of-age, it absolutely is as compelling as, as anything. Um, the term coming-of-age is actually an English mistranslation of the German original phrase, Bildungsroman, which basically means a novel of education. Um, so the transition from childhood to adulthood is kind of what uh, we now think of it as in, in English language, but it was really the, the novel of a process of education originally, and that term came from um, 1817 or 1819. So it's an old genre, it's an old storyline that will be applied many times in many different ways. Um, another one that's taught, I wanted to just quickly show you a separate piece by John Knowles. A lot of people think this is um, a parable, maybe too simplistic these days. Um, I did not study this in school, but I did teach it, and uh, I had been told by my master teacher at Fairfax High School that it was his favorite book to teach in terms of literary terms. Um, the story absolutely fits the coming-of-age genre. It's more about teenage boys um, jealousies and rivalries as um, a motivator for behavior and for plot points. Um, but just about every literary term you could ever study is uh, easily found in that novel, so it's a, it's a great one as a teaching tool. Um, I'm going to show you one more in terms of teaching tools. That's the Dead Poet Society. That's both about a boarding school experience um, and it is taught in schools. But this time, the perspective is uh, the, the coming of age is triggered by a teacher who challenges his students, male, again, this is another um, male coming of age story, challenges his students to embrace life, uh, which will include questioning their parents' values and, and morals and instincts, which is a feature of all coming of age. So the reason I wanted to go into coming of age at all as a video here is because I've been finding people who think my book is a variation on the theme of coming of age. Um, Rapeseed is about a 32-year-old woman, and uh, she certainly um, has come of age a long time ago. She transitioned to adulthood a little early because she got pregnant at 17. But um, she moves away from home, from her home community, for the first time, really, in her 30s. And that is the time when she, for the first time, really starts to understand who she is, who she's meant to be in the world, and how to embrace that person and sort of welcome that life uh, back into her world. Um, that is not classic coming of age, but I've had enough people tell me that's what they gain from reading the book that it made me realize that we really do have an expanded definition now of what coming of age is all about. There's also a teenage boy in this book that triggers the idea of coming of age more um, in a more standard way. So I think that's partly why that uh, discussion has taken place so many times. But now back to the more standard, I wanted to show you one more. The Starbird Sea, Amber Dermont, writer I really admire. This is another boarding school story, um, but I wouldn't call it just another because it's... Uh, much more modern, uh, very different set of circumstances in this. But one thing that's considered classic in terms of coming of age is that normally the protagonist is forced into adulthood by physically being removed from their childhood home um, for whatever reason. 
And boarding school is often a reason, and it is in the Starboard Sea. Um, it is in most of those books that I've uh, just talked about. But in addition to physically being removed from home um, and judging one's parents for the first time, there are some other things that uh, are, can be expanded parts of coming of age. I'm going to show you the Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan because this is a cultural variation on the theme in that Amy Tan um, has a protagonist, very much like herself, I think, um, who is really looking at her family's cultural heritage and deciding how American she wants to be versus Chinese-American versus Chinese. And every immigrant goes through this sort of question. And Amy Tan goes through that beautifully in the Joy Luck Club. So that's uh, another variation on the um, coming-of-age theme. I'll show you another Sue Monk kid book, um, The Secret Life of Bees, because this is, um, you could call it historical fiction, you could call it young adult, you could also call it coming of age. Um, it's from when African Americans first got the vote. Uh, the protagonist does leave home and does judge society for the first time and does have to rise to a challenge, um, pretty difficult situation, one after another that she faces on behalf of uh, someone more vulnerable than she is, and that's often um, a feature of coming of age, too. In, even in uh, Catcher in the Rye, that's focused um, specifically on Holden Caulfield's desire to protect um, younger kids, and uh, so that's, that's not too unusual. Um, sometimes judging one's parents is forced on a kid when the family goes through a divorce. And Jason Donald's book, Choke Chain, deals with that. And I bring that one up next because you can even see from the cover that there are two brothers in this story, one, of course, older than the other, and protecting the younger one, the more vulnerable, is absolutely part of Choke Chain. So it's another um, interesting point about coming of age. Roddy Doyle, Patty Clark, ha, ha, ha. This one's from Ireland. Oh, I didn't tell you. Choke Chain, by the way, he is South African, Jason Donald. Um, Patty Clark, Irish. And this is another story of divorce and um, father's abandonment, which leads to a child uh, being able to judge and being forced to judge his parents' generation, his parents specifically, um, before he was necessarily ready to, but it's a very um, compelling story and a uh, great novel. Um, some people think that The Diary of Anne Frank deserves to be considered coming-of-age or taught as a coming-of-age book. Um, it's, it's not a novel. It's, it's certainly not a coming-of-age novel. It's a diary. And Glass Castle is not a novel. Jeanette Walls, it's a memoir. But, it, but in this case, it is a young girl's transition to adulthood, her ability to judge her parents, um, I'd say Anne Frank's coming into adulthood is maybe being able to judge uh, society as a whole and what's happening in her situation. But um, Glass Castle is probably a judgment of society and a judgment of a very dysfunctional family. But um, if you're interested in expanded views of coming of age, it might be an interesting one for you to take a look at. Um, crazy Moms. That's sort of a genre with a subset within coming of age. Housekeeping, Marilyn Robinson. Um, Mom actually dies and two sisters are raised by a series of relatives, ultimately their aunt who is unstable, and uh, forces the girls into their own versions of stable or unstable adulthood. This is just a stunning, beautiful novel. Um, there's just no doubt that... Uh, it deserves the accolades it gets, so I wanted to point that out. Anne Lamott, um, I don't know if you should call the mother in this book, um, Crooked Little Heart, crazy. That would be unfair. She's grieving. And Rosie, the daughter, who is the one that's coming of age here, is um, dealing with her mother's difficulties while she's also trying to figure out how to be the person that she thinks she is. She's a tennis star and she's realized pretty early on that she can stay a superstar or even expand that, but only by cutting corners, and she's not sure if she should or if uh, 
she should be honest, and that's a question of adulthood that everybody faces at some point, on some level, many people, many times. Um, now this one I would call a crazy mother, coming of age book, um, White Oleander by Janet Fitch. It's an excellent book. Um, the mother figure in this book has uh, murdered her ex-lover, and um, she deals with grief in a totally different way. So this story is, um, it's a pretty big big book because the daughter then is raised by a series of foster families and is challenged um, at every turn by something new that requires new adult coping mechanisms that uh, makes it absolutely a coming-of-age novel that's worth looking at. Um, another thing that coming-of-age often deals with is just specifically the question of sexual maturity. And as a result, I wanted to show you Melvin Burgess' book. Um, he's British. This is uh, his novel called Doing It. Title's right on the nose. Um, this one features several kids in school uh, who are reaching the age of sexual maturity in a variety of ways. And um, they, they have to ask themselves important questions about um, how they're going to handle adulthood, especially as it relates to sexual maturity. Um, I would recommend this book. I would recommend all of Melvin Burgess's stuff. It's pretty edgy, and um, really, he writes from the heart, and I think it's, uh, he's a great writer. Um, I reviewed recently Pamela Aaron's book, The Virgins, uh, similar subject area, but handled very differently. She's American, and um, I'd love to show it to you, but I've either lent it to somebody or it's on my bookshelf somewhere. Um, but that's another compelling feature of the question of coming of age. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of an overview of uh, worldwide views over time of uh, what coming of age can and does and might mean and gave you a few books to check out that you might not have read yet. Um, I'm going to link to one blog post that I, ha that I found that shows some more modern variations on the theme that I thought was really good too. Check those out also. Thanks for watching.